So money can buy you a lot of things, like a nice watch or a nice house, but it can't buy you the most important thing, which is your health. And today I wanna to tell you about something that I'm dealing with. What's up everyone? So I'm in my garage at my new house. Um, it's Saturday today. Uh, you're watching this tomorrow. Normally I film the, uh, the, the episode on a Friday, but yesterday I was in the hospital um, having a procedure done that I want to tell you and talk about today. And really the whole reason why I want to discuss it is because, you know, we talk a lot about success. We talk a lot about making money, but the truth is the most important thing that you've got in terms of an asset and is health, right? It doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank or the car you drive or the spicy senorita action you're getting. If you're not healthy, nothing else matters. And the other reality is that it doesn't matter how much money you have. Health is one of those things that money can't buy more of and it can't fix a lot of times. Now, the truth is that if you have, you know, a lot of money, you can buy, you know, better treatment, you can have the best doctors, but the truth is, you know, it can't save your life if you are going to get something bad, right? And that's something that I really kind of I really understood a little bit more about three years ago when the actor Chaswick Bozeman passed away. Um, he passed away from colon cancer. And it was something really like weird for me because, you know, as you get older, that's one of the things you're gonna understand. You know, life becomes a lot more fragile and you realize that you're not invincible. You know, when you're younger, you know, nothing matters, right? You're like, yo, I'm gonna live forever, I'm gonna eat shitty food, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna do bad things, I'm not even gonna think about it, right? Well, as you get older, you know, you start to become more aware, right? You become more aware of your, of your impending death, I guess, because everybody's gonna die, it's just a matter of when. Nobody's figured out a loophole. And so, when Chaswick Bozeman uh, died, you know, three years ago, I basically went to my doctor, I'm like, you know, he had colon cancer, and that's one of the things that, it scares me, honestly. And the other good news, if there is good news with colon cancer, is that if you catch it early, you can do something about it. And you can, a lot of times, like, catch it, like, and fix it, and you'll be good to go, right? And live a long, happy life. But with colon cancer, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, people don't like to talk about. They also, you know, a lot of times don't realize anything's wrong until it's, like, really wrong. Like, something's going on, you're like, I don't know what it is. And then they do a colonoscopy, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, it's stage four, whatever, cancer. It's spread to this, and you're dead, you know, six months later. Those stories are out there. And so... When Chaswick Bozeman passed away, it got me really thinking. And I was like, you know what? I'm not typically or, or technically scheduled to go get a colonoscopy for another, like, I think it was like six or seven years. I think it was like 50 when you're supposed to go in for your screening. And I don't even have like colon cancer in my family. But I was like, you know what? I went to the doctor and I was talking to him. I'm like, so what are the type of tests that I can get that will basically like let me know like what's going on? And they're like, there too. And I'm like, what are they? They're like a colonoscopy. You can go and get that now. If you want to, you might have to pay out of pocket, but you can do that. And then a heart scan. It's a calcium score, basically. And so three years ago, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go in for a colonoscopy. Now, because I was too technically too young, um, basically it was one of those things where, where I had to pay out of pocket for it. And I think the whole procedure was like $1,500. So money does buy you that. So three years ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do it, right? So I schedule it and I was like, oh God, I don't really wanna do it, but I'm gonna do it. And um, I did the whole prep thing where you drink the stuff, you don't eat for a little bit. And honestly, like I've always heard like horror stories about that. And I can just tell you from experience now doing it twice, it is no fucking big deal, right? You can do it, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but was a big deal was uh, when they went in the first time three years ago, I had five precancerous polyps. They removed them. And I truly feel like I saved my own life from being paranoid. And, um, you know, they didn't turn into anything bad at the time, but it was one of those things that was alarming, right? I consider myself to be one of the healthiest people that I know. I eat healthy. I eat a ton of fiber. I don't drink in excess. I don't do any drugs, right? I generally am a pretty healthy dude, I think, right? And I was like, God damn. So once that happened, I did a video on the Alpha M YouTube channel saying like I got bad news from my doctor and I put a video out talking about it. And one of the greatest things happened, a guy actually approached me on the street at a coffee shop and say, Aaron, I wanted to thank you for saving my life. I go, what do you mean? He goes, because of that video, I actually went and got a colonoscopy and they found 37 polyps, one of which had an issue. And uh, we treated it, we handled it, but if it wasn't for that video, I probably would be dead. And so I realized that it was good to talk about these type of things. And even though this is a business channel, 
I really just wanted to talk about what's going on with me and, and what happened recently, just to encourage you to go and get checked, even if it's not time, even if you've been putting it off, like now is the time, right? And so anyway, I had that done, five precancerous polyps, and then I had a heart scan, right? A heart scan basically took three minutes. I scheduled it, I laid down, it was like an MRI of my heart. And basically, um, it shows like how much calcification you have. And the range is from like zero to like a thousand, right? And once it gets over like a hundred, like your chance of having some type of heart attack or cardiac event is like really, really like good, right? And the higher the number, the worse it is. My number was two. And so I felt pretty good after that, but I would recommend you get one of those. So anyway, I, because of my history with the polyps, they basically said, even though you don't have any family history of cancer, because we found so many, you've got to come back in two years. So anyway, my colonoscopy was three years ago, and they told me that because of my history, because I had so many, um, that I need to come back in two years. And so I'm like, shit, two years. So two years didn't happen, like COVID like was going on and I just kept push, putting it off. And then, you know, a few weeks ago, I went in for my, my physical to get my annual blood work done. And I was like, hey, I need to get a colonoscopy scheduled. Can you give me a referral? They did. And um, I went in yesterday for my next one. You know, I was hoping that I was gonna be clean. I wasn't, <laughs> I had another two uh, precancerous polyps that popped up in the, over the course of literally three years. And so they removed them, that's the good news. But uh, apparently my colon is an overachiever of, of producing uh, precancerous polyps. And so I gotta go back in another two years. But I think about, just, I think about what could have happened if I didn't go. What would have happened if I had put it off until I was 50 or a little bit older, or if I didn't go to the doctor at all, which I know that a lot of you guys don't. Um, I can only hope that this video will shake some of you up or just open your eyes to the fact that you need to take care of your body. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what business you have. It doesn't matter how much money. If you're not healthy physically, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. And money cannot fix that a lot of times, all right? And something else I'd like to recommend is annual blood work, right? This is another thing that is so easy to do. You make an appointment, you go in, and you just get a full life workup to see what's going on inside of you. And the truth is that, you know, if you catch things early, or if you identify them early, you can monitor. But if you have no idea, you never know what's going on, then you're like screwed a lot of times, right? And the sooner you start, the better. You do not have to wait until it's technically time. Now, today, Today is the day. Tomorrow's Monday. Make an appointment. Schedule it. Get into your doctor. Call him. Say, hey, I want to go get a colonoscopy. I want to do this. What can I do? What can we test? What can I check to make sure that I'm healthy? I want you to be here with me for as long as possible, kicking it and being awesome. I also want you to join the White Label Empire because we're making millionaires in there. Do not wait. Do something amazing. I'm going to link to that video down below that I put together for you. It's free. Go watch it. All right, the video is basically gonna walk you step by step how I started a $3 million side hustle through white labeling, right? But my other business, Pete and Pedro, also started as white label. Guys, now is the time. I take you by the hand, I walk you in, I say, yo, here's the deal. The community is literally the best thing I've ever done in my life and I want you to be a part of it. Do not wait, take the chance, do something amazing, hit the link down below. Anyway, annual blood work, a <laughs> little, little segue. I'm gonna walk too, because I wanna show you some stuff in here. Annual blood work is one of the easiest things that you can do, right? You go into the doctor and they check you for all sorts of things. And then if everything's cool, cool. If it's not, then you gotta fix it, right? My cholesterol is a little bit wacky, right? And so I monitored it, my testosterone. When I went in a few years ago, my testosterone was 550. I had it tested because I wanted to make sure that it was good enough, or if it wasn't, you know, I wanted to go get testosterone because I wanted to feel and be as healthy as possible. I started doing some things naturally to boost it. My last testosterone check was like, like, like 750, it went up. And the other thing is, which is interesting, um, I did like a testosterone like protocol video talking about um, how I helped a friend increase their testosterone. My buddy Antonio Centeno, he was at 330. He just had it tested. It's back up to 600. How? He's doing the things that I talked about. It's not rocket science. There's a few lifestyle modifications that you can do that are basically going to help you boost your testosterone naturally. But the only way you're going to know what it is, is to go get it tested. All right, go get blood work. Annual blood work, gentlemen, do it. Because if you've got a baby, 
baseline, that's the thing that you need to check and know, right? You need to see where you're starting from. And then once a year, you go in and see what moves. And if something moved, if something's bad, you can catch it, you can fix it. The whole deal with health, gentlemen, is that if you identify it quickly or early on in the process, you can do something about it to improve your chances of basically beating it, curing it, or fixing it. Now, now is the time, gentlemen, to do something amazing and get your health situation in check. I've got a question for you, all right? I got two brick samples. All right, so here's the deal. On the side of my gym, actually, you wanna go down there? I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. On the side of my gym, right, I've got this super long hallway that sucks. And it doesn't suck, it's just a super long hallway to basically like nowhere. It's actually the mechanical room and the unfinished biz, uh, basement. But the deal is, it's a super long hallway and it's kind of weird. And so I was thinking, what can I do that would be kind of cool? Hey, what's up? You wanna say hi? <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, that railing is sexy. Yeah. You wanna see my railing? Look, that's gonna be it. Simple, right? Simple, little wrought iron. This bad boy is heavy, 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 heavy. It's looking good though. Wow. Perfecto. Thank you. All right, so basement. Here is my fitness center door, right? Super cool, fitness center. In here, nice and big. It literally is like, like 1,500 square feet. Anyway, this is the problem, right? This hallway, <laughs> look at this hallway. This hallway is insane, right? It's kind of weird, all right? You make it right and you're going to my media room. There's a bathroom there, uh, another spare room. But this hallway, right, is crazy. And so what we're talking about is what can we do on like this like hallway or this wall specifically on the side of the gym in order to make it just like a little bit cooler. And so I started thinking about like murals or like really cool like wallpapering. I love like old trains with like graffiti. I was like, what if we made like a big ass train with like graffiti like, or something? And everybody told me that that sucked. Um, I was like, what if I did a mural of Marietta, my town that I love? I could do like the big chicken and everything. They said that sucked as well. And so something that they said is, what if we did brick? Right? Yeah, now we're talking, right? So here's the deal. You come down the stairs, right? You come down the stairs, you see, boom, my fitness center. What if we bricked all this, right? And then also down this hallway. What if we bricked it? I think that would be pretty cool, but we got to do like thin bricks. And so here's my question, all right? Let me actually set you here on the tripod right there. All right, so here's my question. I got two brick samples. All right, I'm gonna know which brick sample you think would be cooler around this and then down this hallway, all right? Option number one, this one. It's like a red brick, right? Kinda cool. Or option two, all right? A Little bit more like distressed, old school. It's kind of like an old like ironworks factory. I personally am leaning towards this and then it really depends on the grout color, but you also gotta remember that the floors, right? They're going to be a polished concrete. It literally is going to be like a Home Depot floor in here. But anyway, which one? Old brick or red brick? Down below, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you're going to choose this for me. And then we're going to have big metal spiral ductwork going like down the hall, which is why we can't just like put up a door. The other reason why we can't just like put up a door right here and close it off is because of the fact that I've got my cat room down there that we've got like a little cat door in where the litter boxes are going to be and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, what do you think? Which brick? Want to see my bathroom? <laughs> Look at this tile. What? Right there. There, shower, cool. Anyway, that just got done. Um, I got a heated floor in my bathroom. Does that make me bougie? <laughs> I think this whole house makes me bougie. Something else I gotta do right now is go get my wife because there's something very important she needs to do. Looking good.